Hi there, Mark here again, and welcome to part one of my build guide for the Tamiya Subaru Brat on the ORV chassis, as you can see there. So, let's get cracking. So obviously starting on step one, what I recommend you do for every step is to get all the parts that you need ready before you start putting them together. So if you just study this part of the diagram, get all your plastic parts that you need, uh, get those all cut out and ready and make sure you pay attention to uh, the part on the side here where it says step one. Um, all the parts are listed that you need for this step and the diagram is one to one so the components will fit exactly over the top um, so you can check that you've got the right parts. Um, you also get a little bit of help such as the brighter screws are in white and the darker screws like this one here um, are shown in a darker colour on the uh, guide at the side. Another point to note is that on this particular guide um, you've got the parts bag shown so you've got BA shown there, BB, MR, MR is the rod bag. What I've done is I've put all my parts in boxes with the parts bag uh, ABC in there so I know which is which. As we go on through the, the guide I won't be referring to this anymore, hopefully if you just get all those parts ready I'm not going to list all the parts you need for each step, it's clearly uh, listed down there on the side. Okay then so let's get on with it. First get part A2 which is one side of your chassis and then you've got part C3 and we're going to attach that with the uh, two 12mm self tappers through those two holes there. You've got your metal bar that's going to go onto that hole there with the machine screw which is a 10mm screw. Then we've got plastic part AAs which locates onto that web there in the chassis. Doesn't say to put this one in there but this is part C14 I'm going to fit that in ready somewhere like that. Note the orientation of those parts. Then you've got your two MR3 spacers that go into these two holes here and they are held in by the hex there. On part A5 and you want to put this bit of sponge tape on like it shows here and that's your battery door locates into that hole there and then we're going to try and get the two halves together not forgetting part H1 which goes right in at the front and you've got that part sticking there it goes downwards as we're looking at it and it just slots in the front there so we'll try and offer the other half up okay so it's a bit tricky but if you persevere you'll get there so just to hold it together now we put the other self tappers into that black C3 part and then your 3 by 10 into the other end of that metal bar. Okay then, and on to step 2 which the manual says is the front arms but obviously it's just these front stays that we're making up. Um, I've done the first one which is the right hand side and it'll look something like this when you've done it so you need to do the same but the opposite for the left hand side. Just follow the orientation of the diagram. So I'm going to get my bracket MP2. You've got your Allen screw and a spring washer. Go through that hole. Then you need the kind of starred washer goes on that. Then your MP3. And then we've got to get the lock nut onto there. Just put it in the box wrench. You've got to get this done up. Making sure that this is at 90 degrees to this one. And I can give it a final nip up. And you should end with your two brackets like that. Step three is the front suspension. Again, there's a left and a right side, obviously. I've already made up the right side. And so basically you've got to do the same as this again. Um, but opposites if you see what I mean. If you look at the diagram you'll see what I mean. So you need your upright and it has got an L and an R printed on it. I don't know if you can see there but there's an L on this one so that's how you know which is which. And then again following the orientation get the part we made earlier and your upright's going to go in there like that. Get your small step screw and you sort of one in the top and one in the bottom. 
and I have put a little bit of grease into the holes that these are going into. You don't want too much though. I'm going to nip those up and you will see there is a lot of play in that. But uh, hey, that's how Tammy designed it, that's how it's going to be. Then get plastic part H3 and that's going to go in the top hole. And then you've got the long step screw that goes from behind. Secure that with a 3mm lock nut. Then part H2, you want this part like so. And that's held in place by, strangely enough, with all this thread on it, but hey, uh, the radius arm just pokes through. And again, you want a 3mm lock nut on the back of that. And as it shows in the diagram, don't do it all the way up. So if you just leave a little bit of play in here, we can always tighten that up if we need to later. So that's your two front suspension units done. It should look something like this. Step four is attaching the suspension stay, which are these. Um, but first of all, I'm gonna make up this first, which is I think the, the front body mount. So you need part C13, black plastic part, 27 mil screw from underneath. And then you want this B7, which is your nice blue anodized aluminium post. Then you need this 3x12 threaded bar and that's going to go in the top and that will hold on the alloy body post and try as best you can to get the hole to line up so that it's in that direction. Then you want the spring which is an MR4 and you want to push that into part B6 and then that's going to go into that hole in the chassis there and that's going to be your front suspension. Same for the other side, don't forget to put some AW grease around this plastic part to give a little bit of damping. I'm going to get the first upright on with these uh, 20 mil screws and go in like so. Then you want to pop the part we just prepared, the body post into the one slot there and that hold with the other upright when we put that on. It's in the slot, just get the two screws in. It should look like this when you've done and on to step five where we're going to attach the front suspension arms. Okay so as you can see I've already fitted the one side which is the uh, right side and that seems to be working okay. Just make sure that you get the one with the arm pointing backwards on both. So for the left one, I'll just show you how it goes on. It's very simple, it's just two BD1 step screws that hold it in. And I will say this bottom one is quite tricky to get located because there's not much room behind that front plastic part. A bit of fiddling and it'll go in. Obviously put a bit of grease on the shoulder of that step screw. The top one goes in nice and easy and then it's just a case of the two 3mm lock nuts to hold those on. And because they're lock nuts you don't have to go too crazy with the uh, torque tightening those up. Just a nip up will do. So that's the end of step five. In step six, we're going to fit the front bumper, which just comes loose in the box. But first, you need to attach the two radius arms. There's the one done. You just need a step screw and a form a washer. And I will say those are tight to screw up, so I've used my electric screwdriver. Okay, so that's all working fine. So you need your FRP reinforcing plate. That's going to sit on there locating over those two holes and then your bumper sits over that and it's held in place with a 15 mil self tapper in the middle and then each of the sides is held on with the uh, the darker 12 mil self tapper they are a narrower screw than the silver ones okay so that's the bumper fitted so now it's time to choose the spur gear. And as you can see, you get three options. They all come with a kit. So you get the three spur gears and you get the three pinion gears. You can have the standard type, 
which is medium gearing, you've got the high speed type, or you've got the torque type, which is basically your lower gearing. Uh, as I'm going to be running a torque tune motor, I think it will pull the higher gearing, so I'm going to choose that one, which is the biggest pinion and the smallest spur, which is 20, uh, 49 teeth. So for this step, all we need to do is get aluminium part MD3, which is a gear, and uh, that's got to go through your chosen spur gear. So you need the spur this way around with that lip in the middle, and we've got to insert this. And it's simply a case of getting this kind of spring clip. And you just pop that over till it uh, sits in the groove and that's locked that into place. And to finish this step, simply get uh, your two metal bearings which are supplied. And pop one in each side. So it's as simple as that, so straight on to the gearbox, which is step eight. So the first thing we need to do is make up the diff. So just put a bit of grease into these slots. And then just pop your small bevel gears into those slots. And just give those a bit of a grease up. Then you want plastic part B2 and just pop in your ball bearing. Again, these are supplied. A bit of a tight fit. Then you need the right hand side of your gearbox and it is printed on the right hand side and uh, follow the orientation of the diagram pop in plastic part B1 into that hole there then your B2 in the bearing and there is a, a slot to go into then you need the right hand side bevel gear and it has got tiny little R's stamped in those little circles there just pop it loosely in place it will slot around a bit, put a bit more grease on that and get your diff, pop it over the top and your plastic part C16 sits over the top your two MR3 spacers go into those hexagonal slots there one there and the other one now try not to lose everything as we turn it over to um, get the two temporary 3x8 screws in so don't go crazy tightening these up too much because as I say they will be coming out again soon. So that's that on to step number nine. So first off get your five metal spacers and they need to go into the holes. Two, three, four and five. So those are the hollow spacers to uh, fit the screws later. Then you've got the solid shaft, which is an MR8, that fits into that plastic housing that we put in earlier, like so. You're on the left side of your bevel gear, and that's going to sit on the top of the diff. Get your spur gear greased up and put that over the top of that bar. Just put a little bit of grease on that. Then you want the other BD2 and bearing that we should have made up in the last step it's going to go there somewhere another b1 fits on the top of that solid shaft like so all we need then is the left side of the gearbox plate it's got to go over and hold all this together a bit fiddly to get that piece in there and again you want your two temporary 3 by 8 little screws just hold it together for now in those two holes and finally you need the three 3B25 screws, which are these, and would you believe there's one missing in this kit? Well, I can't find it anyway, so I'm going to have to replace one of them. So I'm going to replace them all with some uh, hex head screws. But uh, yeah, that's a first off for me. I don't know, think I've seen uh, a screw missing before in a Tamiya kit, but uh, first for, time for everything. So they'll do instead, and we just hold them on the other side with three nylock nuts. And I just looked at the next step, which is step 10, where we're going to fit this. And guess what? We're going to have to take out those 3x8 screws I've just put in. So anyway, let's get on with that. Okay, so with those screws removed, it's just a case of getting your chassis and slotting the gearbox in that gap there. Then in each side is one 30mm screw at the top. And then one of the black 10 mils has got to go all the way down into that hole. It's a deep hole and you'll need a longer screwdriver to get in there to do that up and repeat for the other side. 
Okay then, so we've got the chassis together, we've got the front suspension on, most of the front end done, we've got the gearbox complete and fitted, so I think that's a good time to call a halt to part one of the build guide. Thanks for following along this far, and I hope you join me on part two. Cheers, bye.